Hi everyone, my name is Bruce Schwartz. I'm from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Thanks so much for stopping by, for the support. Um, I can't say enough thanks for the comments, the amazing support that you guys and gals are giving me and this channel. I have an amazing community. Thanks, I love you guys. Now this is Aristarchus Crater. We're gonna go back and look at it and even clearer and a bit closer. May I get in just a little bit closer and I wanna show it again. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I know most of you appreciate it. Aristarchus Crater, we're gonna talk a bit about its dimensions. And before that, I want you guys to understand. Do you see all the jumbled up objects, the bumps, like someone spit out uh, cereals out of their mouth? Okay, and I know that you guys are saying it's just jumbled up stuff. It, it's not, and we're seeing rounded edges because of course, you know, the distance, the atmosphere, the optics, obviously. But I want you guys to understand that on top of these uh, structures, big enough structures that we're seeing are the smaller detailed structures. And that is where, you know, I caught smaller objects over Bianchini Crater, was able to see how the structuring is. It really does look like tunnelization. All right, Aristarchus Crater is 43 kilometers in diameter, not miles, kilometers, okay? And I'm showing Aristarchus right now. You can see at the top there, a part of it anyways. I'm showing a good part um, of it zoomed up. So this entire screen's showing about 60 to 70 uh, kilometers wide, okay? Now, to give you guys some ideal of scale of what we're looking at, it's not that hard because uh, to know because it's 43 kilometers um, Aristarchus Crater and then you look at the screen you say wow okay how close is he so maybe we're not sure of the height but let me tell you um, as for the size of things that we're viewing and considering that the sizes we were told are right well that's what I'm basing um, the scale of the width of the screen on yes I have a a 14 inch telescope and yes it's 3910 uh, millimeters but it's not anymore you understand i'm changing it, it it's excessive to that it's maybe 5000 millimeters focal length now when i'm in these certain frames and i'm getting in very close that's for sure if you look at the scale of the size of LRO photos, NASA photos, very simply, you can see the scale and size of a crater. They tell you exactly what the scale and size is uh, right beside it. These are clarified images, 43 kilometers right there, Aristarchus. Uh, clarified images, uh, better than the last time I showed them, seeing the surface detail. S um, certain areas, these lights are not reflection from sun, I believe that they're actually illuminated. Maybe it's Listen, maybe there's pipes on the surface and there's uh, this smoke or haze is actually coming out of all these intertwined mufflers or pipes that are on the surface exhausting something that's an inside. And this is one hypothetical theory of many. There's nothing wrong with speaking about it, but guys, those are just my opinions. So what I'm showing is raw. There's definitely something up there, but no, it doesn't mean it's what I'm saying it is, but I'm allowed my opinion. And I'm definitely going to give my opinion. I know for a fact that, um, in my head anyways, whatever we're seeing up there, it's a manipulation, pure manipulation of the surface. We have to be ignorant not to see everything I've been showing for the past two years and disagree with that, that's for sure. Yeah, I got some nice footage during um, November, December, some really nice footage. Look right here. Yeah, mountains. We're seeing them on top of Mare Crisium because of that Terminator line at the back. I've never seen them that pronounced. And we could see all the, the elevation. And you know what they say that that is? I mentioned it the other day, which is very interesting, guys. They talk about it being mass concentration. In certain mares, I named them the other day, they have a mass concentration, meaning it's where 
it's thicker inside of the surface there's more concentrated dense surface throughout the surface and that also interferes with the gravity that's over top of that area at a certain height or level and they call that a gravitational anomaly another really cool part of mercurium guys check it out i mean you got to appreciate the elevation and all the lines that are inside of Mer uh, sorry, Mercurium. You can see that high mountainous region. Check it out. Look what's right there. <laughs> triangle, a black triangle. Pretty symmetrical too, because we're definitely close up. And look at the end of it, the tail object, how it's going down. This is an outline on the surface or some kind of object. Now I'm gonna talk about something really cool. It's going to bug a lot of people. We're going to talk about that veil. If there's a veil on the surface, and we all know there is, um, no matter what that veil may be, we're seeing many signs of it. And that's exactly what we're going to go do on a clear night along the Terminator line, the line of day and night. We're going to see the magnification of a grill, like I can't say it any other way, lines side by side. You're going to start seeing them right now on the top there, all along that Terminator line. I'll get some arrows up. Don't worry. It's, it'll be plain as day. Okay. It's a grill shaped like a barbecue shape, you know, a grill of a barbecue lines running side by side. And amongst that all connections, and you're going to see that along the Terminator line. We'll get in really close and we're going to slow it down really slow so that we could uh, see the outer edge of course there's no edge right unless the moon is flat but we won't get into that i don't know about you guys i mean i love this research and you know i often laugh about things and stuff like that i mean i'm devoting my time to this and yes some of this makes me laugh because for me it's just beautiful see that arrow there the terminator line okay so those structures we're pointing to those structures all along that edge that line so we're going to be slowed down a lot of resolution, some high definition, and you're gonna see those grill lines appear that make squares and 90 degree angles side by side, several of them. And at the same time, the, the real structures are closer to the surface, they're smaller, but they have the same reflectivity as the surface. So for you to distinguish them and to differentiate them from the surface themselves you have to really slow down the footage and take the time to view this pause it if you have to there it is right here they're, they're starting to come in there and you'll see as we get in with the next few frames and, and zoom ins live you're, we're gonna really see that construction like objects or those construction like objects i mean or we're gonna see that that could be the possible veil you understand these lines Maybe that's something electric or some kind of a force field. Uh, they're starting to come into view there. That's, you know, causing an oscillation on the surface. This isn't made up. We're looking at a construction. Look at it there. Beautiful. And it could also be the way people or beings would live. Makes sense. They would have to pass through these objects, which would be connected. So... To go to a, a further distance, they would have to have longer tubes, right? For them to be able to reach their destination or to get liquids through there, whatever's going through there. And that's what we see. We see the connections going left and right into this long, always this long tube or platform-like object on the surface, symmetrical, very long, that you can't see because it has the same reflectivity as the surface. Here with the exposure adjusted, those objects that are white on the surface and very bright are colorful. Yes, they're very colorful and they're reflecting back a light, a white light, because that's what our cone cells in our eyes are making us see. You know, the first reaction of a bright light like that for the eyes is overwhelming to the eye. The cone cell reacts and shows us a white image, just like the same way we see a gray moon. All right, so I'm going to guide you through these frames here coming up. Live footage, zoom up, bottom right, right down here. This is where we're looking. And I want you to notice as we're going to zoom in really slow, all the structuring. We're talking about symmetrical structuring. I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, jumbled up crap on the surface. We're seeing these things connected. 
Look at the massive installation that's right there. This was constructed so long me. Look at them side by side. This is no pixelation. It's a beautiful shot. I'm on the surface, nice and close. And where it's oscillating, it's because of these structures that you're seeing right there are trying to show themselves to the telescope. That's how structures appear when you zoom in. The more you zoom in, the more you get different objects oscillating until, pow, they appear. When you analyze a surface, you wonder, you say, why is it so different every time I go up? And you can never really pinpoint what's different because it's all this fine little detail. Obviously, the clouds are never staying in place and they're always forever moving over. Certain reflections, oh, speaking of reflections, check this out. We see an outline on the top there. I, I'm not, there's so much I'm seeing here right now, but let's just look at the light sources, okay? I deliberately took the exposure down to show you guys something. See, they're all following each other. They're going all across the surface and amongst those <laughs> um, bright light sources, there are tunnel-like bridge structures, paths, whatever to, you want to call them, corridors, um, constructed objects, mechanical objects. Well, they're all connected to one another. But you know, those bridges have the same reflectivity as the surface. They're hard to distinguish. Uh, when you zoom up on them, slow them down, get some contrast. And of course, when that line of day and night, the Terminator line, gets near that area that you want to see, it's going to magnify the surface. So before I go, um, thanks everyone. Thanks for stopping by, for subscribing. If you want to get a clear surface, you need to slow it down. You need to get a clear night, a shot. You need to be along the Terminator line. You need to have proper adjustment of the exposure. And, uh, you know, there you go. The Terminator line is never in the same place. It's always something new to see. <laughs>